this shit now. Hello, hello. Thank you for tuning in for show number nine, season two with the facts crew. Ladies, how are you? Hey, 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 hey. hey. I'm doing good. How are you? Girl, <laughs> listen, listen, I had a uh it's been a it's been a week. Uh I my weekend was wow. Um yeah, I, I had this, I had a lot of men jacket on and uh <laughs> apparently my dope oh i can't even say the word my dope behind jacket attracted a lesbian woman to come over to me and ask me as i'm talking to my pregnant homegirl with the short haircut but you don't see her she come over and ask me she was like yeah <laughs> you gay i said no oh well that's fine and well, I want to give you the um, my number so that you can come to my Airbnb and all this other stuff. And I'm looking like, no, I'm not going to your Airbnb. Um, but she's so drunk and turns to walk away that she's about to walk into a sign. This was at the grill fire out at Arundel Mills. She turned around and she go and walk away and she's so drunk. I grab my pregnant home girl, my girl, five months pregnant. I grab her. I said, yo, let's go. We running out of there. It's running, running out of there because she was so crazy. And that's not too far from the, uh, what, from, what is that? There's a military base that's not far from there. And I'm like, she was drunk and it was 1.30 PM and she was trashed, trashed. <laughs> I'm like, it's 1 30. She's making the best of her day. She's making the best of her day. She's capitalizing. Yeah, and she was trying to see what her weekend was looking like. And I'm looking like, I ain't part of it. This <laughs> is where this stops. And then I thought, I'm the first the way she was coming to me. I'm thinking that she's about to try to steal my jacket. And I'm looking like, yo, I got this off Amazon. Like, she's like, mm, where you get your jacket from? And I'm like, mm. so yeah, besides that, and throwing a birthday party for my son. It's been, it was a time. It was a time. Everybody's happy. Everybody's injured now and sleep. So a win is a win. <laughs> win. Yeah. Amazing time. And happy birthday to Alexander. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The young king, the young king. Yes. It's, it was, it was something. It was really something. Um, yeah. There's a lot of four and five-year-olds. And then I had my two-year-old goddaughter with me too. So and you know what? She is a big fan of the show. So hi, Amaya. I know you're watching, baby. <laughs> but yeah. How about you guys? How was your weekend? My weekend was good. Um, I stayed in. A lot of self-care. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. That's As love. See, I got a new deal. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> love it. Love it. It looks very nice. Very nice, darling. Very nice. Amazing. Uh, I guess it's my turn, huh? Well, <laughs> uh, my weekend consisted of no the streets, and it was a marvelous time. Um, I got my homegirl's birthday, we went to go see back, and then I don't know who I thought I was by going out a second night. Oh, yeah, I was showing. Oh. It was a lot. You were. You were. I'm not gonna okay. lie. Monday was a self-care day um a much needed one because it was just like if i see any more tequila i'ma lose it we drank it was five of us just the fifth of patron on friday which i don't think that was too bad um but it was amazing okay. all right yeah <laughs> it was amazing um, um i'm an alcoholic so <laughs> Don't be alarmed, people. But yeah, we had, we had fun. We did. We had fun. It was it was definitely a time. I also drank a lot of tequila this weekend. Like I went and grabbed like the little I grabbed these. So now, granted, I got my cup filled up with this one. This is the one that I had before the birthday party because I'm like, what were you thinking? And I offered to go and pick up kids. 
It, like I knew mm-hmm. I had, I told, I said that I, yes. And the thing about it, my kids, they were with their father. So I'm like, okay, this is easy then. Cause I don't have to do anything beforehand. Just pick up a cake. I just had to pick up a cake and get my goddaughter. That was fine. But then a little, my son's best friend, he wasn't going to be able to come to the party. So I was like, all right, I'll swoop and go get him. He lives up the street from me. So fine. I grabbed him and he's asking me all these questions. And he was like, He's like, so he's with his dad. Oh yeah, because then you guys are gonna go back home together. And I'm like, oh my god, him my fucking business. No. <laughs> like, and I, he, oh my, it was so I'm driving, I'm quiet. He's like, Alexander's mom, Alexander's mom, sit back, baby, Alexander's mom, because he's gonna go back to your house, right? I'm like, bruh. Too many questions. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, don't worry about my family dynamics. Like, yo. He all right, we all right, you won't see his father and that's gonna be that, That it is what it is. Leave me alone. But anyway, on to our women's history history. <laughs> <laughs> women's see, history with the drink champs this weekend, I just got violently high. I just smoked as much as I could and drank it and digested oh, no. it. I did as much weed as I possibly could. Yeah. I'm not violently high. Violently high. Smoke me out. <laughs> And just like that, she has now gained 500 new followers. <laughs> What's good? <laughs> Listen. All right. Well, that is part of self-care for Women's History Month. But um, <laughs> the woman that we will be honoring today for Women's History Month and just making it, you know what? She she reminds us probably pretty much of ourselves. We are, you know, she's pretty much a straight shooter. If she's anything like the character that she, we've seen her play in some of our favorite movies, such as, you know, Jumping the Broom and Why Did I Get Married? And she, um, she also, I didn't even know this, but she's also the director of P Valley. And now thinking about it, it's right up her alley and it's perfect for her. We're talking about Miss Tasha Smith. Mm-hmm. She is 52 years old. She's a twin. Um, she had, was on Couples Retreat. She created this director of Star on Fox and Tales on BET, Black Lightning, 911 on Fox. And she's been nominated for multiple NAACP awards. Did you? I didn't know she was even doing all of this. Mm-hmm. I didn't know. But now, with knowing the Pea Valley part, and thinking of the language and everything that's on there and thinking of who thought about this role for Uncle Clifford. Everything adds up. Everything. Because she wasn't playing with Marcus. <laughs> and she wasn't playing with, um, oh, what was the one? What was uh, Jill Scott's husband on there? Y'all know who I'm talking about. Uh, yeah. Mom Rucker. Yeah, but his- that one in the movie? Yeah. Oh, that's his real name in life. That's his real <laughs> name in life. <laughs> hey listen i got a head full of useless knowledge i got a lot of names in here <laughs> well, Jamal, you know what he it's like you know people they play certain roles and you'll never forget them just like uh like okay bryant from bmf right we're not gonna remember him as that we gonna remember that man in the bathtub that could oh. walk that's oh. what- <laughs> his name was mike his name was mike oh that husband the original one yeah. yeah. Drive up the mountain. Oh, yeah, yeah. Not the follow up one. Not the good uh, one. Not the not the, the, not the true one. His name not was Troy. Troy. But yeah, it was Mike. Um yes. but yeah, she was on his ass. She, she was won. on Charles' ass. She was on everybody's neck. Cause everybody. She taking everybody <laughs> and taking and then then Mike, you know, he shot back and started taking them around. But it's not about him now. It's about Tasha. But everything about her and that character. And then oh yeah, we forgot she did star as um Cookie's sister on Empire. Um so she she played the role. You believe the role and it's almost like I feel like if we were to meet her in person, she would be just that because she embodies it so well. But we don't know. This could all just be great acting, but I believe it. But anyway, Tasha Smith, this right here, this is for you, baby girl. We see you. Okay? There yes. we go. Drinks to Tasha because you know what? One thing about her, when it comes to a drink, she going to have it, okay? <laughs> You know, I can't do no sugar. Oh my God. You know what? Never mind. Never mind. Every time. Keto, 
water, and here we go, just drinking our lives away. You getting violently high. You know, I, I really, we got to we gotta hang out, Nene, because, yes. you know, I'm trying to be like you. And next thing you know, <laughs> like, just forget it. I'm going to take my sip. Okay. Mm. <laughs> well, oh, Lord. but that's mm. to the crazy world that we live in. That's love. So, Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> oh and, and and you know what this ain't even funny why can i even laugh about this it's not it is, you gotta laugh at some of this stupid shit that comes out big facts like, what in your tiny tiny little tiny. mind little thought mind. hanging people from trees should be added to the death penalty but yeah um, that's almost like say hang a nigga without saying hang a nigga like that because that that was there i don't feel that that was going to be geared to any african-americans you know i would have rather hear like in other countries they have stuff like death by stoning now if he says something like that that is an actual thing but that applies to everyone everyone right? yes applies and then furthermore there's no um there's no racial you know no racial story yeah to it yep or behind caning because you know some, well it's not sorry that's a consequence in singapore i believe if you steal or do something they'll cane you um oh probably, yeah they were beating people in the street <laughs> wouldn't want that either <laughs> but wait wait, wait no no it's a lot of grown people that they need some belts and they need somebody to come along and whip them. So I'm not even going to say I'm against any caning. That is a whole nother level right there. Like you got a wet bamboo stick on your ass. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm good. I'm good on that. But well, I mean, lesson learned. Exactly. Just like they say, like if they commit a certain crime with like your right hand, they're going to cut your right hand off. Yeah. Do it again. Try it again. It's, it's, it's giving very Hammurabi and I <laughs> a two for a tooth because yeah. some of the, but like I said their laws don't have a, a, a racial history behind it yeah. versus ours where it's like bruh really yeah. you're about lynching people and you know the only people that really got lynched were African Americans so my thing exactly. is okay so if uh, a non-African American person commits a crime are you going to automatically and they get the death penalty is hanging going to be the first choice for them or is it only going to be the first choice for black people and then my thing is why would you do it on a tree people are already right. practically desensitized with death now with social right. media all around but you're just going to make it 20 times worse we already dealing with mental illness exactly jack up our kids even more than what they are because like i said social media they just show everything if a celebrity died or somebody recording it and taking a picture and a video like what mm -hmm. are you doing like that not insane i'm trying to figure just like how when they have the um when they have the what was it like the lethal injection and stuff or then when they have them sit in the chair and everything and they have we can watch it I feel like he would want to change that too, where it would be as public as you're talking about, because, okay, a tree, you got to take this person outside. You got to set up shop. What? We're, like, I mean, that's the same thing they used to do back in the day. It was like a hundred of them out there and they out there cutting off fun pots and all that stuff so they could have yeah, oh They God. just trying to have history repeat itself. They already controlling women's wounds and what we do with our body. Now they trying to bring back public lynching and make it legal this time. Yeah. But yeah, it's all an agenda. We we know what it is. That's it is. Where we, <laughs> the Blacks, need to to come together even more like i mean i know it's only so much we can do but damn i mean it's it's strength in numbers and actually getting out there and voting i know we all feel like they're gonna pick who they want to pick all right yeah but go out there become a delegate get your voice out there you feel like you got a different opinion run do something exactly. go into your community 
Well, a lot of us just sit around and we complain about all this and that and ain't no smoke, no motion, no nothing behind it. Do something. You're absolutely right. Because we do realize, once we realize the level of change that we don't have, just like how they don't let um, convicted felons and they, you know, you can't go and vote and everything. But these are people who have served and understand the, some people, not saying everybody didn't deserve their time, but there are some people that do understand the injustices of the system because they are victims of the system and they are not going to allow them to make a change because I'm trying to figure out what does a convicted felon, what are they preventing by being able to vote? nothing nothing because i felt like once once you get locked up or you're uh, locked up incarcerated same thing once you get locked up it's like they say you have rights but i feel like you you really don't this because Mm -hmm. now your name on this list now granted sometimes Mm -hmm. you shouldn't have did what you did make better choices make better choices but don't strip everything and just like i feel like they if you're locked up or whatever the case may be and you're not in there for life and you're not in there for 30 years and you're not in there for the death penalty they should still keep you up with the time so you're still acclimated with society like they can use 17 cents a day to do 10 hours of work pretty much (laughs) and then when they come out number to the right and when they get out, they wonder why they so lost or they go yep. back because they done did the same thing. They're not That's up to right, date man. with how the world is moving. Like it's He's charging three dollars for a pack of ramen in there, but he got work yeah. three weeks in order to afford it. Come on, man. I know. I'm not doing that. I mean, wow. yeah. like the, the judicial system is a joke. Just mm-hmm. like I mean, I feel like every branch of the government is a joke in a sense like what are what are we doing here we're failing our people then you got a whole nother creep how are you mayor mayor Mm -hmm. but you get indicted on 56 counts of child pornography why wasn't this caught beforehand and i did also hear that he had a twitter account yes he had a twitter account that's how they they kind of found him um, oh because he's like oh my god but yeah he had a twitter account it wasn't under it was under his name but it wasn't under his name and either way they traced it to him it had some shit on there that he wasn't supposed to have on there and now here we are but well, he's like a pervert anyway he does and for our local viewers hey we want again we are broadcasting from the dmv that is the district of columbia maryland and virginia this was the mayor of a city here in maryland okay so when you think that it can't happen we need to just let you know exactly how yeah, close this is exact and this is again why we need he was talking about gotta go out here and vote because these are the type people that like if he didn't get the only thing that stopped him is that he got caught that's it other than that he was in possession we don't know what he we may find out later on that he actually you know this how he get this pornography how do he get this child pornography because there's people right. that go ahead and get he it and they got this stuff. but did he go and grab these children and get these children to do this like and think like he's the mayor like oh go over there with him take a picture with the mayor da, da, da. like it's so many things that it's exactly. that disgusting um but and it, the not, part that really gets me, no the part that really gets me though is that like okay for example you know we're all mothers um and you know if we want to go on field trips or do anything with our children we have to fill out a bunch of information they have you take a test they tell you everything that is inappropriate that you cannot do well they make you read then they make you take a test and if you don't pass this test, you're not going to go ahead and become a volunteer at the school. So you see all this stuff, not to say that people don't sit here and just see it and check, check, pay attention. Yeah, yeah, they're going to still do what they do. But just reading that and seeing that you have to tell the people that go in here and go and interact with the students, you have to do all these other things. And people don't really pay attention to the fact of it's not just the teachers that's out here trying to touch on the students. It's not just them. It's a lot of people. And then at the same time, a lot of people who are victims of, you know, molestation and rape and everything, these are family members. These are trusted people and everything. So even think about with um, 
the doctor that they had for the Olympics and he was up there and he filling up all the girls and everything, but they don't know. They might've got an injury and think about their gymnasts. So if you got an injury, like in your inner thigh, that's right next to your groin, all it takes is, oops, I'm sorry. Oops, I'm sorry. But mm-hmm. where was the extra person? Because when I go to the doctor, they all up in it. There's two people there. If I have a male doctor. Mm-hmm. So where is the extra person or better yet, when you're a child, your parent is typically in the room with you. Exactly. So I I don't that part I don't I don't get like where not get it if it's an injury on the spot, but if it's an injury on the spot nine times out of ten there's other people training with you also. It's really rare. I mean I know they have one on one sessions, but still when it's a one on one session there's still typically somebody else there. So when but, are you really here, but you can make it look accidental, like she said, a uh, oops, a slip of the hand. Yeah. So think about it. When you go in, when you go into a, a GYN appointment, there's something to cross you. Mm-hmm. Nobody else around you really know where they fingers and stuff. Because they sit there, they talk to you. You can be getting, you know, sexually assaulted right in front of people and they don't know because they'll sit here and like they next thing you know, you see that I don't know what they use that for, but whatever look like KY jelly, and you hear that squeeze come out and they go in there and they're like, okay, you're going to feel a little bit of pressure, like that part right there. There's no one, you're, you got to think it's how much space in your legs and everything. That other person ain't standing right beside them. They they like kind of on the side. They closer like towards you. They like in the middle for real. They don't know what's happening up under that sheet. So with that little it's, light right there, that blocked the view too. It, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's one of the things. So it's like when you think about that and then you think about people and people and with political power, they can do a lot, a lot of stuff. And, but he looks beyond a creep. He, he did it. Like I, when I saw him up there, I was like, ah, you did it. It was just because of the look. And that's not right. But I was right. He did it. But we'll mm-hmm. see. Well, I guess we'll have to definitely update this in the future and see where this goes. What else you got for us, Tay? Then Hogan. He's all over the place. <laughs> One minute says he's about to run for presidency. Next minute. He ain't the what stopped you? You know, like what made you change your mind that fast? Cause that was fast as shit. So like uh, stopped you, what influenced you? Like now I wouldn't run for presidency, just the simple fact that it looks like it adds 30 years to your life. Man, <laughs> what? You said the way Obama <laughs> hand changed real quick. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. He, he was but all black. Know, Looking at how he handled the pandemic and everything, uh, I, he would have definitely got my vote. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. Um, he came through in a clutch on a lot of things. That rainy day fund, when yes. Maryland had its own stimulus, we didn't have nothing. It had no effect on our taxes, anything. Like yeah. he, he campaigned for us throughout that whole pandemic. Um, he also called Trump an idiot a few times. He mm-hmm. did lead the, uh, what was he, the president of the Governor's Association when it came to how they handled the pandemic. And he directly talked to Trump throughout a lot of it. Um, so, yeah. yeah. And he's, he should have stuck with it. I believe he's actually in the process of suing, um, no, sorry, it's Montgomery County that's actually in the process of suing um, one of these big pharmaceutical companies that produce opioids. And they are suing them because they're basically saying they're the cause of the rise of the opioid abuse in the Montgomery County and all over, period. Wow. Um, I don't understand what people's fetish is with fentanyl right now, but it's getting insane. Like, I believe in the last two weeks, they had just arrested, like, two people that had unexplainable, I think he had 18 Hundred pills on him. Then really? they went his house and found another thirteen hundred pills, um, fentanyl pills. You come um, a little superboy in wow. Bumble, right? Yeah. So I don't understand what the fetish is with people getting. I mean, like doing fentanyl. Like you're putting something in your body that is going to take you out. Like <laughs> there's no way around it. It can take you out with the smallest amount. Or if you've built up a tolerance, you can't even say built up a tolerance for it because it's still going to take you out. Yeah. And then the fact that they got Narcan in schools because students are children are getting their hands on this. Like, what 
are we doing? And I mean, I know it carries a pretty heavy jail time, but I feel like if you're distributing fentanyl, you should just get life. Yeah. Like you are, yeah. my, in my opinion, that's intent, but distribution with a tint of murder, mm-hmm. like there's no, you know, like. But I mean, if you look at it over time, every era had its drug that people were abusing. Um, what is heroin? Heron. I'm saying like the old folks. Heron. Yeah, heron. Yes. Uh, <laughs> they wrong. had booger sugar, cocaine, um, crack. All oh, that. Yeah. Shit. I mean, it's just. Let me say this. I understand that we like to try things, and I'm saying we because I'm a trier. I'm not saying that I've done hard anything, but we like to try things and experiment. There are some things that's not worth the outcome or the the potential outcome, okay? Just stick to the normal stuff. Smoke weed, do a shroom, you know? If you really want to play around, do some acid. But don't, don't do nothing that can kill you. Yeah, I mean... I don't know, like I said, nothing ever seemed ever at any point in my life, even when I was younger, nothing ever appealed to me about, hey, I'm going to go talk to tax today. Hey, you guys trying to mm-hmm. do this? Okay, y'all want to go do this? Well, let's experiment with this. No, what? that was never, like, that was never the topic of any of my yeah, friends. Nah. Now, yeah, I have I'm... friends that I know they have dibbled and dabbled, but they're also paying for it now. So, you know, it's like you chose to go your way and I chose to go mine, but nothing nothing about doing those drugs seems exciting or enticing or makes me want to try it. Like, mm. nothing. Yeah. Like, to me, every all of that shit equals death. I'm not going to hold you. It, it just death. You're going to die. Like, because if you do too much coke, you'll die. It'll burst mm. your heart. Mm. Crack. Now you addicted. You can overdose and all this other shit. Then you do heroin. Now you're walking around looking crazy. You do a Falling perk. Asleep, standing up. All the sleep, standing up, doing perk 30s. Perk, yeah. but just all the damn perks, doing Zans. Like, what? Don't in- forget the 2000s and its e pills. Everybody was on yeah. that one. Oh, oh, but man. I've never, yeah. I'm not going to hold you. I've never heard of anybody dying from an e pill. No, they just put holes in your brain. <laughs> yeah, that part. But I never heard <laughs> nobody dying from an e pill. I've never yeah. heard of per se dying from Mar- Molly unless that shit was laced with something else. And you got people out here doing horse tranquilizers. What in the holy hell would entice you to want to put something like that in your body? And I understand people deal with trauma, they deal with pain, they deal with grief, all of that stuff differently. Main reason why these idiots was out here doing bath salts. Oh god! Oh, I forgot about that. Was I why forgot. I, I, was I did. Fine. But that and the little canine stuff, smoking potpourri. Yes. Yeah. K two. Well, you know. <laughs> See, on, what is that? What that his name on being See. Yeah. My, well, my you know what? Well, <laughs> I've lost. You know, back uh, July thirty first, twenty nineteen. I lost my brother to he did an overdose he overdosed and it was fentanyl that was the first time that i had ever heard of it in that capacity um and you know of course like as much as i miss my brother i understand that he was in a ton of pain and it didn't matter and he was just looking for something to take away the pain he right really- because fentanyl is used as a painkiller but you have to well, use- well by his pain though it was not physical pain it was emotional pain because like my brother was 34 years old and had three or four houses he had cars he had money and then like he was just blowing it on you know spending the money on stupid stuff being young but he got all these things because people in his life passed away so like by the time that my brother passed everybody who would have gotten his funeral together all those people were already dead And these people would have still been there. His mom was gone. He lost his grandmothers, everything. Like he was very, very sad and alone. And this is the part where it goes into like men's mental health. We knew that he was sad, but he didn't want to talk about the sadness. 
So instead, he'd just go ahead, he'll do drugs. It's not until after my brother passed that I found out how bad it was with the drugs. And this is like from his best friend who I had never met because I live in a different state than my brother. And it's like, I'm like, my brother was hurting that bad, like that bad. And I'm looking around like for the people around him. I'm like, I mean, but I didn't know. And then, you know, y'all know I talk about I'm a side chick baby and that I am because I ain't know these people. You know what I'm saying? I live in Maryland, they in Ohio. So I had no idea that he went through this much pain and needed, you know, needed the drugs this bad. Like we was, nothing was ever going to be enough and they do stuff and it really went to a point. So like, I mean, he's out of pain, but yeah, now he, he had a baby on the way. So now Mm -hmm. you got a little kid that don't have a dad, you know what I'm saying? Like it's, and he had another son who I think he died. His son was probably like four, if even that old. So yeah, like it's it's real out here. So people go get some help. Leave these drugs alone. Yeah. And then now we're gonna make an awkward transition into BMF. <laughs> so everybody grab your coats. Let's go. Oh shoot, I didn't grab mine again. <sighs> it's all okay. right. You got a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> Not a blanket. <laughs> I don't know what this right? is, but it's silky looking. <laughs> I mean, I you know, just do it like this. You can look like yes. your sister when she was at the, the skate <laughs> alley with the shiny dress on, looking cute. <laughs> but honey, Charles. Yes. We're, gonna have, we're, we're gonna dial back though. We're gonna dial back a bit. Yeah, cause look, cause yo, my eyes, I start having tears like coming down. That's why I was sitting here. I'm like, oh god. I look down. I'm like, oh god. I'm like, no, you got this. You got this. I'm like, just tell your story. Tell the story about Brandon, BG, love you, miss you, dear brother. And there we go. We keep moving. Yeah, my condolences for your losses, too. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but I, you know what? Hey, I look like I could be up on a pulpit. No, that's I'm fine. You up there with Pastor Swift. You passed the Swift right. Yeah, I passed the Swift this weekend, but I think we had enough of him last week. <laughs> I'm, I was waiting. I just wanted him. To, I wanted to pull that thing. I wanted him to like, you know, ow, yeah, I just want to see how that was going to go. But let's see. I'm ch- Okay. Let's start off with, because we know what we want to get to. Oh, <laughs> I, I, okay. I want to go first. I want to go my first last time. Look, I was about to cry just now. I'm trying to get out of it. So never mind. Go ahead. Go ahead. Somebody else go. <laughs> Fine. No, nah, go ahead. Because I think I went first last week, I thought. Because I was oh, my hot meat sound like Cookie Monster. It's okay. All right, fine, Dad. You go first. <laughs> it might, I think it might have been me. But first thing I'm going to talk about, the one thing that we need to be addressing again since we talk about real topics is Markeisha still knocking down Terry. He is 17 years old. You are a married woman, mother of two. And you're going to keep on just being here. Like, you going to smash Terry in the bathroom? Well, I think he's much older now at the point they are in the show. But yes, prior to that, he was still in high school. So yes, I don't know. I ain't seen no birthday celebration yet. But okay, (laughs) but fine, fine. You you got it. Right about that on that aspect too. She is with a toddler. Yeah, she she is she is. Yes. Um. So let's see. So that's that on Markeisha that I have. Um, let's see, let's talk about we're gonna still mm-hmm. talk about her because she tried to put my man to the left when he had no money. But as soon as right. he got the keys, oh, we in the store buying six, seven coats. Girl. Coats. Then too, you talk about, oh, I just love the way he just does XYZ. Oh, thanks for taking care of the baby. Like what? You play my man to the left. As soon as he got a bag up the next following week, you back on dicks. What? Uh-huh. And and you giving it up real smooth, real okay. smooth, with no problem, Terry. And actually, you know, there you are. You get you pressed up. You got this teenager pressing you up against the wall in the bathroom, in the cl- in the club, in the spot, in the yeah. spot. But I I I I I stand with Meech on this one. Her pussy's toxic. It's toxic. And she cut my man right tail off. That's what I'm gonna say. She made cut the tail off. She's like, if you, saw you know. How- was he was sick he said oh that's treason yeah <laughs> treason and the way he did it hey where's your tail like <laughs> samson and delilah yeah yeah mm. yes teen sam teen extra teen heavy on teen 
Um, so let's see, that's how I feel about that. And then, uh, you know, Lamar got finessed into doing coke with Mo and she was down. She was down. She knew she's like, I'm about to take him out. I'm about to do this, whatever she's going to do. And then she wants to sit here and feel bad and go ahead and have a heart. You was just about to kill this man. You went ahead, you ran and grabbed the blicky. You ain't use it. And you know that this man is a terror. Okay. And then he want to leave his dogs. Didn't he get the dog cremated and want to leave it at Joe house? <laughs> what? He's tripping. She's tripping. She about to get herself killed because he's not dumb, but he's, he's also not. Not the fact that he does love her and she does is the mother of his child. So I get it. But you really tread on thin ice when I get it. You trying to set up your own little plan or whatever to impress me. But some shit you just need to stay out of. Stay exactly. the fuck out of it. Stay away from it because you're playing with fire. You got a kid with Beach and you got a kid with Lamar. What are we doing here? Exactly. Being messy and toxic. Exactly. Very extremely messy and toxic. Like it's it's sick. It's sick. It is. It is. And then I'm like, then you want to sit here and then you change your mind on it and everything. So now you're going to go ahead and go get in the bathtub with him and everything. So now you change everything. So what else you doing there, Mo? What else you doing there? Mm-hmm. Now. <clears throat> what we've all truly waiting for. What we're here for. So if you all did not see this episode, let's get you up to date. Well, you know, oh, wait, 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 wait. Before we get there, we got one more person. I forgot. We got to talk about Bryant knocking down the oh, lady, the female officer again after, and it was real, it was discussed. This is also about teenage, watching teenagers having sex with grown people that they get all hot and heavy because, uh, what's her name? Uh, Wanda, I believe. No, no, no. Isn't that Wanda? No, Wanda, that's from Snowfall. No, no, no. What is, Terry Bay Mother. She Her name both Lawanda is something. It is. I think it is Lawanda. So she just shows up to the police station. She wants to sit here and get ready to drop a dime on Terry, but then she think about it and she's like, I'm not gonna do it. Somehow they see this girl in front of them, and then the girl remind gets from I mean the lady police officer gets reminded that you know what? Those video, those pictures was pretty hot and heavy. I need you to go help and help me with something. So next day they going back to their house and Brian over there knocking them down. Then they're gonna get the sex scene. I want to thank 50 and the team for making him keep his shirt on, keeping his clothes on. You just got to see a little bit of thigh. We ain't get to see no cheek, nothing. You just got to see a little bit thigh, little, little, little bit thigh. And I could deal with that. It was <laughs> fine. You could have skipped all of that. They really the could have tasty cheeks. Yeah, because and but the thing about it, she was probably I don't know if they, she was like, well, I want to show my body, so she wanted to be like, look, I'm not like him. Look at me, and so I get it. I understand she's trying to increase her dates, and then next thing, you know, then he realized that she's been burning herself, and she's been doing self harm on her on her stomach. She's like, I do that because it helps to take away the pain after the loss of I think what she said, her sister or something like that, I believe. Mm-hmm. But um, we didn't want to. I didn't want to skip over that part. But now, yes, 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 Mabel. She tried it. Charles tried it. They tried it. Mabel pulled up to the house. Talking about, so she tried to press up on Charles and everything. He said, what, what is you doing here? First of all, you had that little thing, that little piece of fabric going across that damn window on your door. You could have looked out there and saw this. So you was wild for letting her in the home, Charles. Mm-hmm. I was rooting for you. I was rooting for you at one point in time. I gave up on you that last week. I was like, you know what? This this is you ridiculous. Cause I'm like, you getting messy. So I knew once you start getting messy, it was about to get even worse. So now she in the home. Now she pressed. She's like, I just wanted to come over here and borrow a pan. Now she trying to press up on you in the kitchen and she trying to get here and sit here and get you to knock her down while your wife is upstairs mm-hmm. in the I'm shower. Mm, that right there and then but then the, but then the way Charles like can we do this at a hotel or something you know I think we could do that next thing you know we go to the hotel yeah we can go to a nice one they got the heart shaped vibrating bed now they go Charles it's called the easy rest motel <laughs> yeah, the easy oh, rest motel easy sleep You're in a fucking <laughs> hotel that's called the easy rest mind you it's E and Z. Yes. Motel. And you're putting quarters in the damn bed to make it vibrate. Let's, what? What? I can't imagine 
and getting back shots. And he like, hold on, baby. <laughs> baby, get the cord. Get the cord. So what? <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Confused about the purpose of the bed vib- vibrating. Like now, when he said it was throwing off his stroke. Oh, no, no. I can't find my rhythm. I can't. And then she, you know what? Mm, this ain't gonna work. If you... That's, That's like being in a bounce house and trying to walk and got to be sturdy. You're going to have a Kevin Hart legs. You're going to be trying to get your balance. So, But you yeah. jump into shit that you don't even know about. She mentioned the threesome. You damn near buckle in the kitchen. Then <laughs> y'all standing there trying to look at hot as shit. So about, oh, baby, I just came to borrow. Oh, Lucille, I just came to borrow your, this skillet. Bitch, you got 500 skillets at your house. I know you cook just like I do. What you need to borrow my skillet for? Exactly. Then she opened the baker and you standing there smiling up in her face. I'm telling you, oh. it couldn't have been me because they both would have got shot. No. Because, and I'm, I'll am i give it to Mabel. She, she's a thug with hers because she do keep it keep it cool. It's Charles who be giving away. And mm. as you see, when they went to the skating rink, he's nowhere to be found. Mm-hmm. So, you know, are trying to make her feel better mm-hmm. but then she goes get his jacket and what falls out of the pocket yes but he, then first of all rest. let's let's bring it back let's <laughs> talk about right. how lucille had on the one piece shiny jumpsuit to wear at the skating rink okay when i saw that i'm like lucille i'm rooting for you but then you put this shit on see she looked cute she did her hair but I was just confused how she was skating in that. And that's my thing because she might, she would have had better traction out there skating if she had on her Wendy's uniform. You know what I'm saying? And then if she had a hat on, <laughs> if she had a, if she had on her, her Wendy's visor, you know what I'm saying? She might have moved a lot different. Y'all know she's going on her about Wendy's. Okay, she got the benefits. She does have the benefits, Ooh. but the benefits but and everything has lied. Oh, I picked up a job there. Bitch, you got a receipt for a room rental. What job did you pick up there that required you to get a room rental? What do you stay overnight? And then yeah. you paid for it? And I'm still punching the clock and doing doubles at Wendy's? But and now, you- women, now, let's show where the show really messed up with this, right? Here's where they messed up with this whole thing. And this is where I really, I had to realize that, again, this is a TV show. Remember, she showed up there alone. We have all been to the skating rink. So when you put your stuff in there and you lock it, no one else can go in there unless you had a key. So he took his jacket off and put his stuff in there. How? When? And he came out there and just started skating. So then all of a sudden. Know, did it have a lock on it? I don't remember if it had a lock on it or not. But how but would I, he know which I, one I, is I, his? Yeah, right. so then. So, so I'm sitting there. Yeah, so I'm like, I mean, and maybe that's just me thinking entirely too much into this, but it's just the fact that I'm thinking, I'm like, he, why would he even put that, you know, how would he, how did he get to put that in there? You throw that away before you leave whatever you're doing your dirt. Rule number first, one. Get first of all, you never, take, take. you never take it. Well, he used his card. They have cards back then. Nah, he did cash. It was $50 cash and he had some change. <laughs> And then you using my good quarters that I'm probably using at the laundromat to wash all these goddamn clothes in here. Right, because the washer probably broke. Here. Right, and you in there putting quarters in the vibrating bed. But we oh, need to wash man. these clothes. Oh, no. But now let's get back to like we talking about with the vibrating bed, right? And so let's think like position-wise. That side position was never going to work vibrating because y'all was going to be in that position First, right there, somebody so definitely needs to be on the so bed, and somebody needs to be standing to hold the ground. You know what I'm saying? But yo, know, and the way Mabel like, yeah, this ain't gonna work. You go ahead and go back and wipe. Pretty much, but he's sitting there looking heartbroken for because his feelings are hurt. Bitch, I'm asking for the biscuit, and you gonna tell me I gotta go back home to my wife? Yep. The way that the vibrate bed wasn't working out, let's be clear, there's a bathroom. Let's be clear, there's a shower. Let's be clear, there's a floor. He put in I just spent my hard-earned money. My wife is working at Wendy's, and I came here to bring you out. You know what it so was? I, what Denzel say? I'm leaving here with something. I'm I leaving here with something. The first time, this nigga only lasted 90 seconds and 40 pumps. Okay? I gave it <laughs> whoa, to him whoa, again. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This nigga went and got butt naked whoa. and sweated on me for like two minutes. Now this nigga <laughs> still can't get it right in a in a vibrating bed. All right, you just, just it ain't gonna work. Go back home. Again, Neek Neek, hold on. 
we need to go back to this amount of pumps that you're saying that he gave her. There was no 40. It was 14 and a half thrusts, okay? Because that last one, because remember, as Shantae kept saying, his lip was quivering. And I went and I watched that body give you to what his lip had curled. <laughs> okay, he gave, he gave a 14 and a half long, strong strokes, okay? They just need to cut his sex scenes all together. I'm actually no, they, like to, they can go ahead and do that because now I'm pretty sure Mabel going to come out pregnant. And now that Lucille knows, she's like, no, because your father is at the easy rest. Now, imagine when she said that the whole time, all I could think about is the last episode when you was like, I'm working at Wendy's and all this. All I could see was her with the hat on, just sitting here saying this. Because I'm like, that's got to be rough and that's got to be tough. But I mean, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised at all because Mabel, she like, yo, we was here for some fun. And now you're not um, keeping up your end of the deal. So you got to go. So I get it, Mabel. If you're going to be a side chick, you like, you can't even, you can't even, you know, you can't even fuck me right. So. But nah. I don't know what's going to happen next? Like, is Lou still going to find out it, it is Mabel? Because that same skillet she borrowed will be the same skillet that's going up the, the side of her fucking head. I got a feeling it's going to get around a church. Not only are your mm. sons out here living wrong, but your husband cheating on you too. So what's wrong with you? That. But you know what? Is the messed up part about all this though is honestly the thing that really could have prevented all of this from happening was him having, um, as Pastor Swift said, his worldly magazines. He went to the mag. He went to self-pleasure as opposed to cheating on you and you were mad that mm -hmm. he was looking at the magazines i'll be honest i'd rather have a man watch porn all day than cheat on me i would rather do that because at least you're in the house like like don't put it on my pillow like you know what i'm saying <laughs> clean yourself up you know what i'm saying like you just complain that the towels are crunchy exactly but then you gotta take them to the laundry mat right but because he used the washer don't work on the vibrating bitch. You can't take him to the washing machine now because he just spent all the quarters. Well, maybe. You know what? So, you know what? So, now, 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 let's bring it back to let's talk about the amount of money that Charles spent on some pussy that he did not deliver in. Okay. Let's really talk about that. So, Nick Nick said that the receipt said that it was $50. It was a $50 cash. $50 cash. $50 cash tender and he got changed back. So now let's say that the room bought a good, let's say $45, $40, all right? So now he taking, so did he come in there with quarters? You know what I'm saying? Who had the quarters? Because I knew, you know what? Mabel had to have it because he wouldn't have had it because he didn't know. He ain't never been in there before. About the vibrating bed, oh, hussy. Yeah. I just, if I could, if I could just smack him and the fact he tried to lie about it, like, he real life tried to put together a whole lie like that shit was about to work. She's like, nigga, I'm not dumb. You rented a room. That just, like, I'm sorry. Oh, I picked up the wrong papers. How the fuck you pick up the wrong papers? If you're doing a job, you're in the office. Those receipts aren't in the office. Well, they probably are because, you know, they have their copy, our copy. But yeah. you're going to have. Oh, remember, wait, wait, remember this back in the day. They ain't handle cards yet. Right, so they had like okay, but still, you had yeah. your receipt. I had yeah. mine for the sales transaction, but you are a handyman, so therefore your receipt is either going to be handwritten because this is back in the day. So your receipt is handwritten. So you mean to tell me that you can't tell the difference between a handwritten receipt and a actual printed out receipt because. They're going to put it in your hand also. Oh, Thank here's you. the payment. Here is your, you know, here's your receipt. And, you know, back then they would pay you in cash or check. Mm -hmm. You don't really have any, you did some little slight work. So, you know, they'll give you cash for that. But. Okay. But now Lucille really should have been mad about different things. Okay. So now let's think. We got to go back and watch this. What's the time on there? Because now I want to see how much time has passed since she was at that hotel you was here. Cause now I'm like, so you ain't even fucked a bitch when you here. <laughs> you wasn't even, also, like, oh, well, I'm glad you're giving her the same dick I get at home, Charles. Cause yo, <laughs> <laughs> I will say what is also blowing me about Lucille is the fact that it took. 
I mean, she had her little inklings, but it took her a while to really put it together. Like, in, in, in my opinion, sometimes she played, she played dumb. She did. It, it, it she played she really dumb. Did. And I'm like, what? It's, I'm, it's, 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 it's factors. I mean, they're both, mm -hmm. I don't want to say they both to blame because they, they, they kind of are, but no, I mean, just, well, yeah. he took it a step up. He just took it too goddamn far. I guess it comes down to self-esteem, right? Because she's like, well, I don't dress up like this. And then that's why she got the credit card and when it got the JCPenney's outfit, lingerie and everything else. So she's thinking about what else could I do to make him feel more attracted to me? And she's like, so because now she thinks it's about the clothes that she's wearing because she's seen these magazines. The magazines are selling sex. So it has to sit here and be provocative to gain his attention. Step it up to get her husband's attention. She was looking at those magazines like, okay, well, this is something right. he Maybe. So she stepped it up with the floor, a floor length nightgown. Yeah, because that's what stepped it up. Sure fucking did. No splits. <laughs> had a going. Don't do that. She had her shoulder out. She did. Don't do her that's like that. Saying. Charles. <laughs> I can't tell if this is 1051 or 1031 p.m. on a receipt. <laughs> <laughs> but I definitely yeah, wouldn't look. But that's, and that's exactly what I would look at. Because then I literally check the time. I'd be like, so you ain't even have enough time for the bitch. Be like, oh yeah. Or then be like, what if he was there just a little bit longer? But think about it. The way that he left that most, think about the amount of money that Charles spent that he ain't had that night, right? Because now he didn't came in there to the skate to the skate party so now he come in there, so he come over there and skate over excuse me can i cut in and then she's like like oh my god he came she's so excited yeah he came all right he came there because he ain't come nowhere else all right next subject y'all like that boom yeah okay now let's talk about yes my charles sorry charles now let's talk about we don't know by the time that this episode airs, we don't know what else is going to happen. But let's talk about these professional athletes wanting to be so hood, so gangster. And, you know, they got all this money. They get respect. They some of them are even, you know, they they can get all the girls, but they're still like like rapey and stuff like this. Now, in this one case, this person hasn't got any rape charges and hopefully he won't because the way that job ja Morant. Now, let me be clear. He is a player or he plays for the Memphis Grizzlies. Well, I'm sorry, played. He played a former player now of the Memphis Grizzlies. <sighs> He's this an amazing man. basketball player. So I'm not understanding. He is. And the thing He's about it, I've gone to the Grizzlies games. Like, here's a funny thing. When they came to town, I've gone to the Grizzlies games. And I want to say he was only at the first game I went to in 2020. So I saw him then. He wasn't at the last two that I went to. I went in November. He was not there, right? And, you know, being a fan of the team and you go to these games, you want to see him. So when he wasn't there then over whatever reason, like, I don't know why he wasn't there, but I guess it was so he'd go do some hood rat shit with his friends. And that's what he decided to do. And now here you are, you are now suspended indefinitely mm -hmm. because you flashed a gun on IG live in the strip club. And you took the weapon on the plane that has got to be the, that ain't, that's not even a fumble. That's just, that is, I mean, now let's be clear. He is 23. He is young and we've all been 23. You know, we had some, we had a conversation about this before we recorded tonight. We've all been 23. We have all have some proud and unproud moments, you know? Yeah. And luckily no one was there. <laughs> I remember it clearly. Luckily no one was there to necessarily record it. And this back in the day when you had to go ahead and take your computer and hook it up to a desktop and everything, you couldn't do none of that from your phone. So when you are uploading the pictures, you realize whether or not you even had to put this up there because you had to wait your time to go ahead and do this. But to sit here and see is so talented and to sit here and see all this, you flashing gang signs while you're doing like, we know that people want to show their gang affiliate and everything. Now you're taking, you mess up you're like your livelihood, your legacy, because if you suspend it indefinitely, you 23. I don't know, like these people that, that are the higher ups in this agency, they're not trying to hear that you different at 28. 
they're not trying mm-hmm. to hear that. And it's so unfortunate. You're so talented. And the thing about, like I said, like, yo, I've been to the games. I've been watching the games. Like you, it's what and why? Why? That part, but then even though he is 23, where's his parents? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, Usher, is, Usher is on tour in Vegas right now. He got a residency in Vegas. So that's where he's at. That's where his bad daddy is. Now, I don't know his... <laughs> his, now his mama. The lack of guidance. Like, yeah, you... It's only so much you may be able to tell your child, blah, blah, blah. They got the bag. This, this, that, and the third. But you're still my child. I'm still going to guide you and not until you don't be mindful. Like, you're in a different... You're in a different lifestyle now. You're actually being held accountable for every little single thing you do and what mm-hmm. you say. You got people looking up to you. And I'm not saying you can't live because you're in that lifestyle. You just have to be more conscious because it can all change in the blink of an eye as it did for him. Like he's in yeah. indefinitely. So who's to say the Grizzlies gonna pick him back up? Who's yeah. to say somebody's gonna pick him back up when the season's, season is over? Yeah. Now, yes, he may have secured the bag, but look at all the money that you're missing out on. Now you're probably exactly. about to have some endorsements and a few other things yeah. that you have had on the back end. Like it's deeper than just losing your job. <laughs> like you're exactly the, everything when, that comes. When I think about him and his actions, you know, it makes me look at Marshawn Lynch. You know, oh yeah, he still does his ball head hoe shit. Don't get me wrong. But he also <laughs> acts his tax bracket, if that right. makes sense. Yes. You know, he knows how to walk that fine line of I'm still a nigga. Yeah. But I'm gonna sell you yeah. these subway sandwiches real quick. <laughs> <laughs> and no, I'm gonna get drunk and I'm gonna drive on oh. three tires. But I'm also <laughs> here to tell you to try these Doritos with uh <laughs> Manning and all them. You know, I'm a it's duality. You got to know that fine yeah. line. Yes, he could have had the gun. Always be protected. I'm never going to take that from you. Because I'm wow, they like robbing you. Right. However, you don't however, have to flash it. We don't need to know on IG that you got it. Let no. the run up on you. You in the strip club. You in the strip club. Bitches is clapping ass. And you going to pull a gun out? You, you know, doing? I'm not worried about twisting up my fingers if I got booty cheeks clapping in my face and they're exactly. going to clap in your face especially you. the money exactly and the stage you put a gun out why because somebody what she told you how much it costs because she wasn't th- trying to throw no money out and it is yeah, really wild like what, yeah. what was the reason <laughs> it's a bit loaded. well it was loaded for what like i mean i get it like you said things happen always protect yourself but keep that to yourself. Like, everybody don't need to know you strapped up in the club like Nick said. Fuck around and find out. You try some shit, now I blast your shit. So here we are. Let it be in the news. <laughs> Somebody ran up on me. I protected myself. Got on the plane that, with it. Right now, that is a better story than, oh, I'm in the strip club. they throwing dogs. Here's a, oh, I'm going to flash my little shit. What? Yeah. And then and again, a little pew pew. <laughs> And exactly. But the thing that really gets me though is that you it just shows you how quick these things change because you went from a two game suspension. Two game suspension. Next thing you know, indefinitely. Listen, no. I, I kind of I agree because again, you're setting an example for the community. You got kids looking up to you, you glorifying having a gun in this type of setting. And we are glorifying it, and then you throwing up fingers and all this shit. Come on, man! You, I mean, act your tax bracket. That too. I mean, you got John Wall. He always repping his set with Shy Glizzy and whatnot, you know. But at the same time, he Mm -hmm. treads on that thin line, like you said. So you know, it ain't too worry about keeping it real. Say about John Wall, except you know his affiliations, but you don't know. Mm in detail because he trades like he, he still acts within his tax tax bracket and i mean i don't know i just i feel for him but then on the back end it's like i don't feel for him because it's like dude we already got enough with violence kids with guns and all that and 
no, all this crazy mess going on now, you're just adding fuel to the fire. Like, oh, it's okay. It's not okay. Like, what what are you doing, my guy? You are a public figure with the bag. That's very true. But you know, what really gets me though is that I'm thinking, so like, all right, in the area where we live, when we were younger, there were so many stories about um Chris Weber and um Jamal Howard. We would hear about them getting in trouble all the time. The reason that they were able to stay in the NBA so long is because there were no cell phones with cameras and stuff like that. But they were in trouble all the time. Like all yeah, the time. Gilbert, Gilbert all the time. <laughs> all the time. Because I remember there was a day where Jawan Howard, I think he was he was going down 202 and I think he was drunk. That was one day. And then the very next day he got in trouble for something else. And then by the time, but then he did all this stuff and then he showed up to the game and then, the, um, and then this was back when they were the bullets. And so he went ahead and they won the game. They had a bunch of points, everything, but it's still the fact that you had enough people put it like this. There's a lot of, there's a lot of black people. There's a lot of athletes. That's not even bringing it down to color. There are a lot of athletes before you that have committed so many crimes. They've, you have so many people that you've seen do wild stuff. You know, and they've made a bunch of jokes about him on social media. And some people, they saying, like, he really was setting up. They were like, oh, God, he's setting up to be the next Aaron, um, Aaron Hernandez. So now now they taking you there. Now they saying that you won't be so hard that you're going to do stuff like that. You were creating a legacy. So even if you got to go out, like, think about, all right, think about Magic Johnson with AIDS, right? Well, with HIV. So he comes out. He says that he has this and everything. And so, yes, but he's still around because he didn't tarnish his legacy. He could not play anymore and he couldn't play because of that. But he still went ahead. He didn't go around and go on no rampage. He got kicked out on some whole other stuff. But that just meant that he was out here. He was he was living his life. But he still comes out and goes to events. He can still show up places. He can come out places. Is he going to be able to do that? No, it's going to be if somebody see him, next thing you know, he's going to start being like how Mike Tyson was, right? When he, he couldn't box anymore and everything. And he's going to be out here fighting people. He's going to pull his gun out on people. It's going to be really, really bad for him. He's smoking weed right now. We know he's smoking weed heavy, heavy. I feel like the NBA needs to stop testing for weed anyway, but that's a whole other topic. Yeah, because what's going to happen? Everything needs to, if it's not affecting your performance, and it's not in, it's not like yeah, not affecting your performance. Like you got steroids, which enhance your performance, but it takes away from other areas. Message. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> if it's not affecting you and it's not affecting your game or your work ethic, why, 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 why? My thing is the way the marijuana industry is now and how it's taking a turn is actually healing people it you know people are using it for medicinal reasons you can right. eat them. now you give your dogs too it's helping people right now so the fact that y'all are just nitpicking like once again times are changing he's not on anything hard like fentanyl is you know like and who's to say he's even smoking weed? Who knows what he's on? But regardless, mm -hmm. you're putting yourself in a stupid position. I'd rather they say, oh, we see John Morant smoking a J on live. Whoop the fucking. I, I could have dealt with that a lot better. A lot better. <laughs> it would have been a lot better. Everybody would be like, oh, my man got gas. You know what I'm saying? And like, and then he would have got suspended. He right. got missed suspended for a couple of games. Right. That's and why he wasn't putting nobody's life in danger with a weapon because you're in a strip club. All it took was one bitch, two bitches clapping ass too hard. One try to get on his face, one on his crotch, and he tried to move the gun out the way. Now somebody shot because you can't see. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like the it's a it was a lot of hazards. But you know what? Moving forward and going on to hazardous stuff, we got our girl Neat Meek that's gonna take us into this next topic right here. Woo child, we're going to talk about some dating horror stories. Um, yes. Like, I have a question for you. Have you ever had an ex create a fake social media page just to see if you were cheating? Mm. I'm not going to lie. I have never had that. And I don't think I've ever had any dating horror stories. Mm. Lucky you. Girl. I yeah, don't lucky you. I not when I know when we kind of thought about this topic, I actually sat down and thought was like, I don't have like no 
dating horror stories at oh i mean of course you know you got the occasional ones where you out with a dude and his girl blowing up his phone but that to me that's not really a horror story because it's just I like you dealt with that one i, 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 I we weren't dating I don't really know. We weren't doing anything, to be honest. Yeah. And his girl just happened to be blowing up his phone. And I'm like, yeah, mm, gotta go. See you later. But other than that, I've never had any date dating horror stories or exes that have stalked me on social media. Now, they might have unfriended me and came back to follow me. But <laughs> they, I, I don't have a horror story. Like, nah. Look. I got I'm one. Like, this one, out. Block this me one out. and you try and come back. Have some respect for yourself. No. <laughs> they, that, no comment. That's what I'm gonna say about that. Because I I definitely have I had a situation where someone impersonated me on text and they scheduled me for a date with somebody on text. And they were talking like me, again, on text. So all the little slick stuff I say or whatever, when I was like, yeah, um, like I would say something like, uh, uh, like, oh yeah, you hang, yeah, cause you try to hang with the kid or something. And I stopped saying this phrase at the time, but this person knew that I had used that phrase. And back when I was messing with the person that they were reaching out to, I was using that phrase, but it had been like, maybe three years had gone by I didn't even talk to this person anymore this I didn't talk to this person because I found out that this person was a married man who said he was separated and was trying to make it seem like hey you know I'm separated da, da, da. and it's like you got to watch how that goes or whatever but all right I realized that no you are not separated separated you are married married you know what I'm saying but um like full on you're in there in the marriage man next thing you know i'm sitting here i'm like this there's a date scheduled with this man and then the person confronts me about why i schedule a date with this dude and i'm like i wasn't even here and you went on my phone how'd you reach out to him can't go the crazy part so years later i'm like oh I don't know where he at, but like, you still with her? Like, well, I don't know what's going on because I'm just trying to figure out how this went on. But you know, we had some great times. We had some great times, but no, but I'm like, I had a whole date scheduled for me. And I lied to you not then wanted me to call the man. And so I call him and I'm like, oh my gosh, because in my mind, I'm like, he's married. So he already did file, but I really don't want to put you in a bigger situation over a situation that I really did not create. So I got to call this man and the man who did this texting wants me to call this man in front of him. I call him and I say, Hey, I'm like, who is this? And so I had a nickname for him, but then he called him when he said himself by his nickname, I was like, Oh my God. Oh my God. And this is once I realized that this is this married person. Cause I kept thinking, like looking at the message and something that he said, and I'm like, I think it's, I'm like, Oh my God. So and it's like almost 11 o'clock at night. And I said, I hope you, your wife and your daughter are doing well. Um, that was not me that scheduled this date with you. That was actually this individual right here. Then he tried fake like he ain't send the messages. And I'm like, that, that was something. That was something. So that's probably like, I had that in, uh, let's see what else. That's probably like one of the worse well no 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 um i had somebody definitely impersonate me um some yeah somewhere else like they just they they picked up my old phone number that i cut off and they picked it up and reactivated and they out here trying to make plays stuff i ain't got nothing to do with hey yeah. you must have some of the best meow in the world because listen listen Obsessed. all i know all i know <laughs> is I mean, thank you. I appreciate that. Cheers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Meow. Um. <laughs> however, okay. However, 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 you don't want them type problems. I was just minding my business. I'm like, I didn't even talk to this. And again, I didn't want to see it. The man was already a cheater. I don't want to ruin his marriage. Like, cause yeah. she didn't find out about us. Cause the way, like I cut stuff off and I was never going to reach out to her because I didn't want to do that to her. But dog, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, people got lives out here. You can't 
do stuff like that. But yeah, that's that's pretty much some that's that's some of my crazy ones. What about you guys? I know Shantae, you saying that you ain't never had nothing that took you that far. So neat neat, what you got? I haven't had anyone create a fake social media page or anything, mm-hmm. but I definitely have like a list of a list. horror stories. <laughs> Girl, okay. this could be a segment on every we show and I have a different Let's story. Okay, um, you know what? Then I got some more. I should never do that too. I should just do one. My bad. Go ahead. Yep, let's do right. it. I'll do um I'll do my craziest one. Um, I'm not gonna use his real name. Definitely don't. Mm-mm. Yeah. Not even out of like uh not even on no respect stuff, but just like nah. Nah, it is out of respect. He's no longer here. And I have a lot of respect oh, for my bad. Dang. So I'm not going to not- yeah, I ain't gonna use his name, but um, this is where accountability comes in because okay. I know that I had a part to play in this. I'm not excusing none of what happened, but I do take responsibility for my part that I played in it. Okay. Um, I was rather young and I was dating this guy who mm-hmm. I met through a friend it was actually her first love and he oh. pursued me like later on down the line the whole situation started off foul so I just should have known that it was just going to be a foul situation from beginning to end but um, everything was going good um, after a while he got a little possessive and okay. I started realizing there's a little little bit more to it um we stopped getting along but it was toxic so we will break up get back together things of that nature okay. things started becoming verbally aggressive towards me oh wow um and at the time I was working at a restaurant so you know you young you gossip at a store and all that type of stuff um I ended up meeting this guy this other guy and he was cool, you know, he used to come into the restaurant all the time, so everybody knew him, he was like the mm-hmm. homeboy, he was also a plug, and, you know, I just used to go get my stuff from him, and they okay. think nothing much of it, um, all the while, man dudes still having these issues, these problems, so now this guy has become like my friend and my confidant, I'm talking to him, and uh, he's stressing me out, oh, it'll be all right, that's all you gotta do, blah, 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 whole time he was working his way in. I'm young, yeah. I'm impressionable, I don't know, so I'm just looking at it like, oh no, he's just being nice, yada, yada, yada. Um, Ended up being like the middleman for them two, if you understand what I'm saying. He, gotcha. Oh, man. He was, oh, man. you know, spreading yeah, in the community. You. And the other one was, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I worked out the deal, not realizing, again, what position I'm putting myself oh, in. Oh, God. Um, it's so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> accountability is a mofo, I'm telling you. Yeah, because what? Um. Oh, God. Yeah, the story gets wild. Uh, <laughs> all right, so <laughs> toxic breakups. You know, he came in the restaurant, yoked me up, and had me outside. We was arguing, all this and that. Yeah. Uh-huh. So my coworker and roommate at the time, she told dude what was going on. He was very protective over me and things of that nature. So you know, he came and got me. It was just like we going to my house. Mm-hmm. Uh, made sure ain't nothing happened to me you know oh you yeah. saved me fall in love blah 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 blah. still went back to dude oh my god yeah. because young well, dumb you know yeah oh my god oh my god this is where my heart is and he's gonna get it together I'm gonna drink to this hey listen yeah. you're gonna need to drink the whole story um oh god. and the thing is more because when she said that oh god. more oh. Okay. Um, so all in all, my roommate didn't like the dude that I was talking to initially. He was verbally abusive, physically abusive. Um, he used to try and break into the apartment building, kick down my door, all types of stuff, broke his hand trying to break into the building one time. Um, had to call the police on him. His mother 
family even came over there one time to stop him. My father had to step in and stop him. Um, oh, God. No. Yeah, it, it, it it was was now. This is beyond. Like, but one night, we all get off of work, and we in the parking lot, and his friend that worked with us is riding with my coworker and the girl who really didn't like me, but she ain't like him even more. They decide they were going to tell him that night that I was having sex with the other guy and he needs to leave me alone because my life would be better with this guy. Yeah. Um, she said what she said about what I was doing. Next thing I know, that nigga had me by my neck and threw me in a car. Um, we were sitting in some alley by a dumpster. Oh, God. A gun on my lap and tells me, you better call this nigga right now. <sighs> if you say that y'all are having sex, you going in that dumpster. Y'all, when I tell you, I just knew I was about to die that night. I would have called everyone except for him. I yeah. couldn't do anything but call him because his number was saved in my phone and he knew it. <gasps> yep. He knew that I changed the name to somebody else's name. And when I went to that number, no, nah, not that one. He said the name. Oh. So yeah, I had the call. And as soon as he oh. answered the phone. So such and such said that me and you was having sex. And now such and such is sitting here asking me, I oh, mean, you having sex. Can you please tell him that we not having sex? <laughs> to this day, I thank him. Because he saved my life with what he said. That nigga snatched the phone on my hand, man. You talking too much. You fucking my girl or no? I mean, in my dreams, I fuck her every night. Oh, my God. I just knew I was about to go in the dumpster. Yeah. That nigga what? hit him with the, <laughs> yeah, you playing. All right. Hung up the phone. And I got to go home. And you here today to God be the glory because what? And like a dummy, I still went back to him. Oh my God. Okay. Um, but yeah, it took my dad stepping in. When I realized I had to call my father to get him away from my house, yeah, I left. I left that situation. But yeah, I got stories for days. Y'all want him. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, this is week mm -hmm. one of dating <laughs> horror stories. <laughs> Tune in next week. We'll get, we'll get more. Now we'll go ahead and next time we'll talk about the next that you're riding around with a dope dealer and he don't think you know he's a dope dealer, but you know he's a dope dealer. And then he tries to cook crack in your kitchen. Come back now. All right. Listen, well, now it's time. Okay, for... I was playing with fire. It, he had to pick me up from the barbershop one time because I was getting my hair done and that nigga's in the side view mirror blowing kisses at me. <sighs> playing with fire. Wow. What a time to be alive. Moving on. You know, make the damn story now at this point <laughs> yeah, that that is the definition kids of a hard head makes a soft ass yeah. exactly you know what and then this shows well, how old were you when this happened you were J john morant's age so you um, understand the i was 22 22 okay maybe? then that works that's john morant's age yep that's sound about right all right. Well, Tay's going to go ahead and take it off with Ask my Statement. <laughs> Let's see. I'm sorry. Is it Tay? Is it Neek Neek? Is it me? We don't know, but we'll be back in five. <laughs> well, 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 you know, we're back. Your favorite duo with my guy, Mike T. How you living today? How you feeling? Hey, so you know when the little meme, they're like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> what I have to do? After the previous segment, what's popping? <laughs> how are you feeling today? How, how are you feeling today? I don't know how to feel. <laughs> <laughs> well, how was your weekend at least? Um, it was um typical, typical Mike weekend, you know. Okay. Do I mean, you know, um, how, how was the? I mean, I know you probably watched the UFC fight. No. Oh, it watched you? I was watching uh, Chris Rock, and then I fell asleep right after <laughs> Chris Rock was over. And then I woke up. I saw John Bones Jones walking out to the ring. And then next thing you know, I fell asleep for a second. And I woke up, and it was like, he's the champ. I'm like, what the? <laughs> yeah, I ain't going to lie. He, he, choked, he choked dude out real quick. I was yeah, like, hey, um, 
I'd have been blown. Like, I'd have paid all this. I mean, now granted, they did get their money's worth with the UFC fight because the female fight was actually really good as well. Um, that girl got choked out too. I said, so it must be a night of choking. <laughs> Niggas was tapping. I, <laughs> I got to be the one. Listen, so before you get to the question, I'm just going to give this up. My freshman year in high school, I remember this vividly. So I wasn't, I'm not going to suit myself up like I was the man. I was not the man, but I was pretty popular. You know what I'm saying? Early in my high school career, I had to prove myself. And I did. So I kind of had a reputation of, you know what I'm saying? I can kind of throw down. Man, we playing basketball one day. And me and this African, he started getting a little chippy. <laughs> Not I'm chippy. To myself, hey, listen. Hey, I can handle this. I'm kind of like 3-0 and in a little high school fight. You know what I'm saying? Man, my hands worked. But my body didn't. <laughs> that man, I don't know how. Too. He ate my punches. But he choked me out. Oh, Lord. Choked my ass out. So, just wanted to give a shout out to the African dude that choked me out. You choked <laughs> me. I've been humble and since. You know and you know what? And shouts out to you for accepting accountability. Hey, man, listen, you damn, I, I someone choked. will come back and be like, yeah, I choked him out. Whatever. I already talked about, about it. So, you took ownership of that moment. Hey, and, listen, you know, hats off to you. Hats I off tell to people you. I'm 327. And 63. I've taken a lot of I've been snuck in the club. It's like it's like a chip on people's shoulder. Sneak my team. Oh <laughs> yeah, what happened to those people that snuck me? But it's allegedly. But you know, I'm just saying, man, listen. I mean, I I get it. I can admit that I lose. I've lost, I, and yeah, I've that been on that side of the 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 I was foaming at the mouth. I was like, "Oh my god, I never felt this before." What the hell? Look at this African strength. How the hell? <laughs> oh god, foaming at the mouth. Oh my god. Oh yeah, oh, he my. got me. Oh, yeah, that god. sounds like he had a good grip. He had oh, he yeah. had a. But we we appreciate your honesty and your accountability. I appreciate it. Now on the back end, I. Can't say that I've been there. Yeah, <laughs> because ain't knock on wood, knocking real hard. Because I'm, you know, still at this nice young age. I don't plan on getting into any more fights. But I haven't had the pleasure of taking it. When I lived but, in Florida, I fought every single. We was only down there for a year, so that's three hundred. Don't fall every day. That's three hundred sixty-five days. I fought at least. Every other day, if not every other other day. But I mean, there were I at know, least four fights in a week. <laughs> the newcomer, so I I get it from that standpoint. The so, man, listen. Are there the beef? The beef. What did you do, Mike? What now? Now I have to ask you. What did you do? What, I was what, a Yankee. True. I was from. They don't consider Maryland the South down there, so you know. I I'm like, get it, but damn, every nah, other listen, day. That's why. That's why I learned how to fight. <laughs> Everything I was doing before then, I'm just throwing them. Down in Florida, I had to learn. <laughs> Boy, get out of there. <laughs> he said oh, I was just. <laughs> he was bobbing and weaving. <laughs> listen, I learned how to fight down in Florida. It was different. When I came back up here, it was a different team. That's wild. But do we have the question? I'm sorry. Yeah. It's I, gotta, okay. I gotta admit my flaw. Hey, listen, I gotta admit. I just gotta admit my flaws. It's okay. Some people don't want to admit they John Morant. You gotta take L's, man. It's okay to take an L. That's what life is about. My book is coming one day. Y'all heard it first. I've been saying it for years. The book of L's. It, every chapter is named after L. Love, life, learn, listen, everything. So if you hear somebody else do this shit, it came from me. I got up when I finally finished writing my book. You'll see because 
Yes, I took a lot of L's. But to me, that's actually something that people need to be exposed to, and they actually need to experience that and and hear that because everybody thinks they're just supposed to win, 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 Mm-mm. and that's not the case. You have to take L's in, in some aspect of life, whether it's fighting or is losing a job and you're trying to create a new business or whatever it may be you have to take an L but it's good L's too love but love is a good L you know what I'm saying love is a good L it's good L's L's, you know uh oh yeah I mean oh yeah like you said their L's aren't always negative right but you need to take an L to grow yes Clearly, that's what you did. You grew your boxing skills. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to go ahead and uh, transition real quick. <sighs> so, this is actually a generalized question, but since you're a male, I feel like you should be able to answer it. So, as a male, what do you think females' biggest min- misconception about men that's causing them to struggle with dating? Ooh, this is a good one. Ooh, Ooh this is a good one. Oh, snap. We thought one. it would be all the other questions. This is a good one. Could you repeat the question, please? <laughs> it's a long ass question. It is a long question. So as it a is, male, it's good. As a male, what do you think women's biggest misconceptions are about men that cause them to struggle with dating? Women's biggest misconception about men. Oh, I'll tell you yeah. we that that's, we don't wear moose boots. Y'all think that we this <laughs> complex figure, that we this complex person, that we just kind of, it's simple. It's really simple with us. That's the biggest misconception. Is is that we are very, very simple creatures. Everyone is a creature. Women are creatures. Men are creatures. We are very, but the male species is very simple. We tell y'all what we want verbatim. But either you don't see the context clues or some are not that blunt enough to say it. Now, now, I will say, there, now, hold on, because I back myself up. I will say, there are some lame ass dudes out here. I will say that. But, for the most part, men are so simple. It's so simple. We wake up, we go to work, we come home. Within those three things, all we want is peace. <laughs> when we wake up, we want peace. When we at work, we want peace. When we at home, we want peace. That's it. Now, how you get to the peace, that depends on the man. I can't speak for all men. Some men are a different type of peace. Some men want you all up on them. Some men want you clean. Some men want you to be, as I am podcasting right now, if another, if I had a female friend over here or a female person I was dating and she was on the couch doing her, I wouldn't give two shits. But just her in the same vicinity as me is good enough for me. That's just me. I'm basic. I'm chill. I can't speak for all men. But some men, they want the clingy. Some, it, 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 it doesn't matter. When they're home, they just want peace. They just want peace. Follow the context clues. If the man come home every week, I mean every day, and he's upset about work, asking the man how work is. Everything he want to talk to you about. No matter how much you think he want to vent, he don't want his peace. Home is his peace. He don't want that disturbed by what he just went through because he wanted work to be peace, but it wasn't peace. So when he gets home, he just want peace. I ain't with the old fashioned, make his dinner and make sure the warm plate is there and all that type of stuff. I ain't with all that. That's, that's, it's 2023. He can get some food on the way home if it's that, if he's that hungry. Oh, that's true. <laughs> I'm just saying. 
I ain't, yeah. I'm not saying he got you got to be the stay home wife. Put peace though, huh? That's a form of peace though, having his dinner made. If you stay home, if you a stay home mother, yeah, okay, cool, that's fine. But if you work just like him, be realistic, bro. She need her peace too. You're right, and I mean, for me, peace food is my peace. <laughs> True, that, that's what I'm, and that's what I'm saying. So it, it's 2023. When we were growing up, nine times out of ten, the mother made the dinner or whatever, whatever, however your situation was. But majority of the household, the woman made the dinner. Now yeah. in 2023, the moms are working. The women are independent. The women are successful. They're doing something outside of the household. So if she is, if if, if you have that type of woman. Be mindful of her piece too. Pick something up on the way home, bro. But Boston, have you, you, want a, you want a good, nice meal? Boston Market is still out there somewhere. You no, know <laughs> but I will say this. I will ask you this. Have you noticed that? Sorry, now there's more males cooking than females. Like a lot of, I've noticed like a lot of females that are younger, like the younger generation, they don't know how to cook. Okay. And I've noticed that it's more men in the kitchen. Because I hate to say it. Jay, please don't clip this. I know you're going to clip it. But women want it. Like the gender. And then some dudes was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and some females were like, all right, then. So, I mean, this younger generation is like, you know, and I, I want to be respectful to them, but they got the, you know, there is no gender or what, you know, whatever they subscribe to. So it's different. But I mean, again, if I if I'm dealing with the woman, she's nine times out of ten, she's probably got a job just like me, nine to five. Or something, or maybe better, you know. But I'm not just going to automatically think that she's cooking. Now, I'd be nice, but I'm realistic with mine. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, but just be simple. That's the, that's the, when we just simple, we just simple creatures, just want peace. If you know that he gets upset when he loses in the video game, after he loses, shut up. For a good 30 minutes. Just I'm a jerk. So if I see him nah, see, see, I'm see, like, dang. Ask the question. And I'm, telling <laughs> you, I'm telling you, for at least 30 minutes. Just leave him alone. Don't try to give him no loving. Don't try to give him no, you know, don't know. Right. Even if he enjoys it, he still doesn't enjoy it at that moment. <laughs> That's what you're... He going so you say he gonna take it, but he wasn't yeah. looking for that. And now nah, he's gonna he tell you that you're welcome. You're like, you like, just you wasting the go. time, like, and we're getting older. Don't waste moments like that. If you're gonna do it, do it at the moment. Like when he loses, let the, loses the Madden. Don't. Matter of fact, for real, for real, awesome real stuff, ladies. If you're playing a video game, go in the other room. So we are not supposed to try and play it with him. Okay, too, no. So. It depends I'm, on how it depends on his level of gaming. Your I've had, video games too, though, so I like to sit there and play with you. Listen, okay. Here's the thing. I've had girlfriends that I play video games with. No problem. The way these games are set up, and I'm not just saying it from a male's perspective. I'm just telling you because I was a gamer. That if I'm playing online, I can only play online from my system. So you have right. to watch. Right. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> no, I because if, my, <laughs> if okay, I'm playing I'm, online, if I'm playing a computer, cool, baby. Yeah, baby, you made a shot. Right, whatever. <laughs> if I'm playing online, go in the room, do what you gotta do. You know, you might you may get away with sending them a little some pictures and stuff like that. Depend that might be his only game online, and then you could get his attention away. But if he if he's online, listen, I'm giving y'all great tips. If he's online, <laughs> cut it. Just go go away. Ass tone. I'm trying to tell you. 
Me and Tone were heavy gamers in the 2K community. Anytime we lost, I had a female over here. Anytime we lost, I had a female over here. Every single time. When I didn't have no female over here, we was hooping. But we try listen. What else can I think of to give y'all some game tonight and then wrap it up? I've already told you about the foods. The foods and moo-moos, leave them alone for the game. Moo -moo. Y'all like cool? I think I missed the food thing. The Oh, listen, the food, Shanika, it's simple. Oh, God, here we go. Simple. No, 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 I'm not <laughs> simple. Just simple little things. Scalloped potatoes, asparagus, stuff like that. I'm not even going to get to the main dishes because that doesn't make a difference. You can give, fried chicken is a good one, but asparagus. I'm for steak. Oh, <laughs> uh, steak? Yeah. Yeah, but it has to be, it depends. At this point, at our age group, every man has had a woman that's get, make, make, made a mistake. If he's had at least 10 women, six of them have made a mistake. <laughs> Stand out and be different. Make them lamb. Mm. Not really. But it was a joke. <laughs> I know. No I'm, jokes allowed. If you're gonna make a mistake, what are you gonna make with the steak? Asparagus, nine times out of ten. I mean, that's just a go-to. To me, I feel like steak and asparagus go hand and in hand. Scalloped potatoes. Yeah. The scalloped I potatoes is what brings them in. Not the steak. I would do cream spinach and like mashed potatoes. Cream, no, 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 no. <laughs> Men don't really like cream spinach. I'm telling you right now. We just eat it because y'all like making it. Y'all like making all the stuff. We just simple. We simple. Just simple creatures for real. Like if you really think about it, ladies, and I'm going to leave y'all with this. If you date it, I don't know what's a high number, but 20 men in your lifetime. If you ever ate with them, do any of them like getting their hands dirty? Nah. Y'all have a good night. Nah. Go ahead and marinate on that one. <laughs> Wait, how, what kind of dirty we talking about? I, I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I mean, I, you brought it up. I'm, I'm just, just trying to make listen, sure I, I get... I put my hands cool. like this for a reason. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. I um, just... There's a difference. Okay. That's all I'm saying. You ladies, you like men with clean nails. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, but ribs are good, though. Ribs are <laughs> great. But there's a time and a place for ribs. You're absolutely right. Now, that's enough... See, Shante, you get it. Every <laughs> order. Ribs wow. is another thing that you can make for a man that he'd be like, oh, shit, she really liked me. <laughs> There's a couple of things, women, that you can make that's like, oh, shit, she liked me. Salmon, salmon, whatever. I, we already know. A couple salmon. Of so Please, black up. people, it is salmon. Listen, salad. it's a running thing on this show that I mess it up. It's okay. That shit don't work no more. We hip to that. Y'all kind of like that. Chicken chicken Alfredo. Alfredo too. Yeah. That, that's dead. That's dead. That's dead too. You just hungry oh, at that point. Yeah. At that point, we know that you're hungry. So therefore, we don't even want it. <laughs> no more. We know we're hip to that. Chicken Alfredo. Um, what was the sa salmon? Whatever the shit's called. That those two things, men, we know. See, 2023 is about men knowing what we know. We're gonna let y'all know because all y'all little famous Sukihanas and Cardi B's. <laughs> And the Megs, for like four or five years, y'all been snitching on the women and telling us all the game. We ain't know before. We were just stupid. We were just trying to game. Chicks, <laughs> chicks using us for dinner. Chicks using us for lunch. We don't even know. We just like, oh, you know, we still got a shot. Nope. You don't even know if that's our boobs in the picture. Now, we know everything. They told us everything. So, just letting y'all know. Y'all think women still only let you know what we want you to know. No, nah, that's done. Suki Hana done told us everything. Yeah, okay. Everything, but <laughs> listen. Okay. Listen. Men wear purses now. Not me, but men wear purses. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're right. You're right. Listen, that, that. We have to end this segment because I'm gonna get in trouble. Men right. wear purses now. 
We're gonna figure that's, it all out sooner or later. That that's where we that's where we ending it. Is that on that? Listen, run from the men with the purses and the Playboy tattoos. No, no, oh, no, yeah. girls. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know the crazy part about it though is that you know, since we do get complaints or not even complaints, I'm sorry. Ooh. Um, we do get receive commentary. <laughs> we do receive feedback. There we go. We receive feedback on things here. So if anyone with a purse, any male, I'm sorry, any if any man with a bag, a an man. expensive oh, it's a bag, purse. No, no, no. No, see, you got to say it respectfully. I mean, you could be inclusive and call it a merce. This show is called okay. Facts. Hold on. This show is called Facts. They go, <laughs> the, they go right to the aisle that y'all go to, and they get the same damn strap. Little, little, they wear it just like y'all now. It's the difference. I told my brother, and I'm not going to say which one, but those that know me know what I'm talking about. We were sitting up here talking, and he was telling me, he has something similar. I said, no, brother. Oh. Satchel. Wait, hold on. You ain't saying you have some, no, no, brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Okay. They wear men. Listen, I'm telling y'all, if y'all want to do it, I'm not calling myself real. I don't, I hate that term. I hate the real term because everybody's real. If somebody tell you a lie, they really tell your ass a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe in the real shit that people say, but I will say this: women, you better start getting some real men because they're catching up. <laughs> yeah, they're getting nails done on a regular. I'm they telling get you, real heavy. Yeah, I'm okay with uh, a man taking care of his nails in the seat. No, 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 no. There's a difference. They know what to shop. Major difference because I went to my cousin's birthday party and one of her best friends, her dude was there with, mind you, he had on this chain. I'm not going to say what type of chain it is, but he had on this chain, biggest shit, flossing at the party. But mm. then when I zoom in on the pictures from their baby shower, my man has his nails painted light pink with the oh. M of his chain on his nail. Oh. Oh. Okay, we, tr we, tried to, we tried to end this. We tried to end this, so I'm gonna end it like this. I'd have told y'all 20 years ago that there was a rapper that wore a dress that called guns dicks that calls his friends bay, and people is talking about free him. Y'all would have called me crazy. Hmm. And here we are. Here we are. So, ladies. Oh, if you want a man <laughs> in 2023, just keep it real. Just keep it real. We keep, we keep it real simple. Simple is the best way to go. If the man likes popcorn and he just like regular popcorn, don't put none of that sweet shit on there. Just let the man eat the the way he wants it. <laughs> well, what's wrong with sour cream and onion popcorn? See, <laughs> you make that shit for yourself. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, if you have a purse, just know that those thoughts right there can be directed. <laughs> if you, you know what? We, never mind. We're just going to leave it alone. Thank you, Mike T, for your insight. We do appreciate that. Um, thank you for your honesty. Um, thanks for accountability. And thanks for letting everybody know that, yeah, you took a fade, but you got active. And you know what I'm saying? You better prepare for the future. So that's what's up. That's what's up. Well, ladies, it's been a long week. It's been a long day. Everybody grab your cup. Let's see what's up. Oh, my cup sounded a little empty. All right, now let's go over here and do a bunch of hood rat shit. Hey, take that top off. Let's go. <laughs> mm. Yep, I'm going to wake up drunk. Anyway. Yep. <laughs> Wow. Woo! Smoke and a smoke. <laughs> what a time to be alive. Hello. Uh -huh. Well, this right here has been another episode of the Facts Crew. Um, we want to thank you for tuning in. Please hit the like button below. Please don't forget to so go ahead. Since you're already here, go ahead and subscribe. Leave us some comments. You know, we love to see how you all feel about us. And if you have your dating story, dating horror story, please share. We will keep it. We ain't going to say who you are. Even though we're going to know who you are, but we're not going to say who you are. We're not going to put you out there like that. Just like 
whoever right. we are talking so, about tonight, anybody that knows about our situations, they knows exactly who we were talking about. I don't want to slide in the DMs, but slide in the DMs with your horror stories. Shimmy in the DM. Shimmy Thank in the DM. Nothing more. Just we need just stories and feedbacks in the DMs. And most of all, go to our Facebook page. Yes, we have our a Facebook page. page now, guys. And we have an Instagram page. So yes. make sure you also follow us on there for our latest episodes. Make sure yes. you Facebook group and shout out to all of our Facebook members who have joined our group. We have yes. about 200 members now. 200. So There's 200. Uh, exactly 200. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Pretty much. Yes. Because you won't be disappointed. You won't. And just follow us everywhere at 613 Fay. Um, six either 613 Fay here on um 613 Fay or 613 Fay DMV, depending on whether or not you're going to be on, depending on what platform you're on. Either way, look it up. You're gonna find us. Follow us. We love y'all. Thank you for tuning in. Good night. Good night. <laughs> and we're back. That right there was a little bit of technical.